Welcome to your first tutorial video for the Survivor Stories Multi-Factored Research Project. During this video, we will talk about how to write the first paper for the project, and that being the background. So while we discuss writing the background, we'll discuss writing any sort of research paper because this project starts with research and it leads to writing. This first paper is a two to three hundred word paper on the tragedy, illness, or challenge your survivor faced. It's not long, but it must be fueled entirely by research, not your own ideas. Students often don't understand how to take research and turn it into writing. In fact, the way that students usually do this is, to buy, is by finding one resource and basically paraphrasing that one resource. That's not so much research as it is paraphrasing a resource. And of course, that's the beginning of research, but not what we're looking for here. We're looking for research-driven writing. That means multiple resources all aimed toward one idea. And as a student, your role is to make sure that you are doing all the reading of your research and taking all those ideas synthetically. That means putting them all together, seeing similarity, similarities or differences and drawing trends to write a two to three hundred word focused paper on the challenge, the tragedy, illness, or other issue. What I'd like to do is show you how I wrote my model example. The model example is available on my big campus and you may wish to take a look at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you look at the model example, you'll see that I have included quite a lot of research to provide background on the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings. But how did I get to this point? How did I form each paragraph? How did I conduct the research and make sure that I've included all the research in each paragraph? Well, let's go to my Digo list. You should have a Digo list right now. And that Digo list will include a number of websites. Those websites might present images, they might present videos, or they might present text information. Do not forget here on the My Big Campus bundle, I've shown what types of research you must do. So on this Digo list, you have a lot of different information. And hopefully, if you follow the class instructions, you've tagged each piece. I've tagged each piece as survivor, background, or sometimes images, indicating how I intend to use this. Using Digo, I can click on background, and all of my non-background resources go away. So I will look through my research, and of course I will read. So I can pull this up and check out what it is. This is the Boston.com Boston Marathon Bombing site. It includes a large amount of research, stories on everything specifically related to the Boston Marathon bombings. This looks a little bit too much for me right now. I'm not ready to look at this. So instead, I'll go back to my list. I'll try to find something pretty general to give me some grounding. Now many of you will jump to Wikipedia, <clears throat> and that may not be a good or a bad place to start. However, you may not cite Wikipedia directly in your writing. Instead, how about starting at something like Encyclopedia Britannica? The Encyclopedia Britannica will give you an edited and verified general entry on your subject. So, I can read through this, and it's not very long. I read some details. I might even click some links to find more information. But students are told to read all the time. How does this help? It only helps if I'm taking notes. So I have opened a document that I'm calling Background Notes, and I've started by typing my first research source, Boston Marathon Bombing of 2013 by the Encyclopedia Britannica. And in bulleted format, I've listed facts that seem to be interesting and important to me as I read. So as I read here, I see that April 15th, 2013 is the day that this happened, and I note that. I note a number of facts. I'm not ready to write just yet, and I'm not starting my writing just yet. Instead, I'm just listing facts that seem important. Then, after I've finished with that, I'll close it, go back to my research list, and pick another. 
So maybe I'll pick up the FBI site. This one collects news releases about the investigation. Well, I've read about the investigation a little bit in my Encyclopedia Britannica entry. So, when I'm reading through the FBI site, some of these make sense, and I might know which ones to look at. For instance, I see here the suspect in Boston Marathon attack charged with using a weapon of mass destruction. That's something similar to what I read elsewhere, so I might include that as one of my important notes. And I include a few notes from reading through the FBI site. Once I've read through the FBI site and included the notes that I find to be important, I close it and move on to my next one. As I continue to do this, I will fill my notes page with source after source and detailed fact after detailed fact. So at this point, I have, from the beginning, the Encyclopedia Britannica entry and facts, the FBI site and its facts, a New York Times article, blog-based, and its facts, the One Fund site, which is a charity resource for Boston Marathon bombing victims, a BBC News article, and another New York Times article. I've collected all these facts, and as I've done this, I've collected details that are starting to help me understand the Boston Marathon bombings of 2013. Once I have collected all these facts, and this should take me a little while, I can create an outline of my paper. What do I want to write about the Boston Marathon bombings? Well, it seems that I have a lot of facts about the bombing itself and the immediate response. I have facts about the victims. I have facts about the suspects and how they were arrested. And then I have facts about what happened afterwards, especially the marathon that just took place a year later. This will help me divide paragraphs. Once I have all of my research done, I've read my sources and I've collected my facts. I've created an outline of how I want to discuss the issue by looking at my facts and categorizing them, joining them into different paragraph groups. I can start writing. Here, you'll see that my first paragraph basically takes the Encyclopedia Britannica entry and presents some of the important basic facts. On April 15, 2013, two bombs exploded at the Boston Marathon. The bombs, bombs exploded at approximately 2.50 p.m. near the finish line. Investigators said that the bombs were made from pressure cookers filled with explosives, nails, and ball bearings. The explosions killed three people and injured more than 260. All of that comes from this Ray resource, and the Ray resource is my Encyclopedia Britannica resource. I'll talk more at a later time about how to cite this information. What's important right now is to realize that these facts came from this list. My basic information about the event came from my basic resource about the event. Then I continue. I've decided to talk about the investigation. So, I have some facts about the FBI investigation from the FBI site. I also have some facts from this Preston and Mackey source. The Preston and Mackey source is the April 15th update. They also gave updates on the investigation and what happened directly after. Finally, I have this other resource. Investigators turned 15 square blocks into a crime scene. And that also comes from my Encyclopedia Britannica resource. I apologize as I make changes. Do not forget that all drafts are drafts, and until you've gone through them quite a few times, you cannot consider them to be final. Then I have a paragraph about victims. I'm talking about the three people that died. I'm also talking about the one fund being established to aid them, the victims of the attack. Finally, I write a paragraph about the pursuit of the suspects. I find my information from a few different resources. And I conclude the piece with an indication of what's going on now, especially what happens with the running of the marathon one year later. This paper has come from me collecting research, reading through each source, gathering notes on each source, developing an outline based on all of those facts, and then writing my paper to follow the outline. Let me summarize that one more time.
first collect research collect your research through the Digo annotation list that we have discussed second read research read the sources that you've collected I note important facts from sources taking those notes onto a document I develop an outline from the listed facts write my paper from the outline and the facts on my notes document. Later we'll talk about including in-text citations, but at this point you should have a draft that is divided by paragraphs and is well organized and most importantly fueled by numerous sources of research rather than merely paraphrasing one. You have access to this model example. Further, you have access to the rubric that I will use to grade you. Do not forget to look through this rubric to understand exactly how you will earn points for this assignment. Read the model example carefully and do not forget that I took notes on each one of my resources. Go to your Digo list. Use the tags to separate your sources into different sections. Read, watch, and think about what you've researched. Include the notes, write the paper, and then we'll iron through all the wrinkles in class. But once you have this solid work done out of class, you've done enough to send you on your way to writing an excellent background for the Survivor Project paper.